episode of 12 Years Reviews, where I'll be looking at films. I have a bunch of discs behind me. My ticket. So, Josh, what film did you go see yesterday? Yesterday, I went to go see Tomorrowland. It was an interesting little film. The critics are giving me really mixed reviews. Uh, my thoughts were mostly positive. A 7 out of 10. Most people ask me. Oh, wait, nobody asked me. If somebody asks me who's my favorite director, I'll, I'll usually go with Alfred Hitchcock. But my second favorite director is F.W. Murnau. Nosferatu, too, among many other films. This is a set that I bought. But what am I going to be talking about on my first episode? This! Michael Bay is possibly the worst director of all time. I mean, there are other people, like Uwe Boll. But Michael Bay is just bad. He doesn't know how to make a story, characters, or a plot. He does, however, know how to make special effects. Most notably, explosions. Oh yeah, explosions, oh yeah. But this movie is boring. There are plenty of exciting scenes with great special effects, um, very impressive. But mostly it's just boring. And the suspense scenes aren't suspenseful, because we already know what's gonna happen. You don't, you don't want to already know what's gonna happen. Alfred Hitchcock is one of my favorite directors. And he makes movies with suspense. You don't always know whether or not something's gonna happen. His movie Sabotage, for example, where a kid's carrying a bomb. I want somebody to take their bomb and, and, and throw it away from the camp. We don't know what's gonna happen. If there's gonna be relief, or if the bomb's really gonna explode, it's intense. In Armageddon, there's a scene where they have to defuse a bomb. Well, you already know, because it's a Michael Bay movie, that everybody's gonna be safe in the end. I mean, they might have to say their goodbyes or whatever, but the world's gonna be safe. They're not all just gonna explode and never save the world. That would be unpredictable. Michael Bay wants to go for predictable. Let's read the top of this. The Criterion Collection. Now, the Criterion Collection is possibly the greatest collection of all films. Some of the best films ever made. Even my favorite movie of all time is in the Criterion Collection. Let's go through all my others. 400 Blows. Great Expectations. There's Beefy. Notorious with Alfred Hitchcock. Eight and a Half, my eighth favorite film. Huh? Yes, that's right. Oh, you think I'm done there? Orson Welles made a movie after fake. Les Samurai. Huh? Classic Jean-Pierre Melville. A Hard Day's Night with the Beatles. Great music, great comedy as well. Charles Chaplin. Great, great comedy. What are they? Oh, yes. 8 out of 10. Watch Fantastic Mr. Fox. Great characters. Great stop motion animation. They worked hard on this. Or Michael Bay's Armageddon. Bad characters. Bad script. Bad everything. Just you can't see the special effects. Which I find hilarious. Now, ladies and gentlemen, a reenactment of a Michael Bay movie. 
Not very good, huh? Here I'm gonna use my trusty DV player and just check out a couple scenes from Armageddon and just say why they're so bad. Oh, look, he's, he's filming it at, at multiple angles. Oh, you can totally see what's happening. See, every shot, the camera has to be moving like it's a music video. It's not a music video, it's a movie. Now watch, this is absolutely the worst scene in any film of all time. As you can see, there's a homeless man, oh, a cute homeless man in the middle of a giant, like, explosion, and he's trying to rescue his dog. Well, watch this next shot, because this next shot will bother me. Not, not all these shots, with all the explosions that Michael Bay just loves. Oh, yeah, explosions. Oh, yeah, explosions. But you'll eventually see the, the shot that really bothers me. Okay, that's enough yelling, guys. You see, these are some impressive special effects, especially from 1998. But, you know, why does everything have to be so hard to look at? This is just insane. Okay, now this is the shot that bothers Michael Bay. Does not know how to make a film when he does a shot where we were shown that a homeless guy was trying to save a dog. Hmm. Okay, okay, okay. This might end up being sad, okay? You know, not. this won't happen in real life. In real life, you'll just have to say goodbye to the dog and you'll have to face the facts because he's in the middle of a bunch of giant explosions behind him. Okay? Well, he saved the little, the little doggy, okay? So, there's this... Cute homeless man and a dog, and he saved his dog. Oh, mm. and then and then you can be like, oh, cool, you like explosions, and oh, look at the puppy and the homeless man. He saved him. That's what the dumb people at the theater are gonna think. They're gonna think that in movies. It's always best to just, you know, just go, hmm, let's just make everything be happy. Because, you know, in possibly my favorite disaster film, The Poseidon Adventure, not everything turned out being happy. In the end of that movie, it's sad. And, you know, it's emotional. But then, in the remake, Poseidon, Everything's all right in the end, cause he, the the guy who dies, the main character, no, a uh, uh, spoiler alert, but the main character dies in the Poseidon Adventure. He survives in Poseidon, and that's a film by a director. I think his name is Wolfgang Peterson, who's directed uh, *Das Boot*, *The Neverending Story*, and. Oh, what else? Uh, the Perfect Storm. So, you know, he has some experience with making, like, suspenseful movies underwater. I mean, The Never Ending Story is a suspenseful film underwater. But The Never Ending Story is great. Okay? They want explosions, and they want everything to turn out 
happy. It's fine if your movie has a happy ending, but not everything has to be happy, and that shouldn't be in the movies. There's a movie that I like, and it's called 2012, and a lot of people hate that movie, but a lot of people like Armageddon, which I don't get, because 2012, you can see what's happening with your eyes, you don't, you don't have to go through, you know? You have good shots, you have good special effects, the story isn't very good, it's predictable, but that's what you expect from a Roland Emmerich film, and, you know, it doesn't matter if the story is predictable, because at least you can see the action. This is insane! This is just... What, what's happening? They sound like squealing pigs. Oh, see, the guy has the... He has the... He has the puppy. You saw him running. Hey, you can be talking, but why does the camera have to be moving every shot? There he is! There's the guy who made this possible. There he is. Say hello to my little friend. There are plenty of directors who use themselves in their own films. Jean Renoir appeared in the rules of the game as a character, as the character Octave. Uh, Alfred Hitchcock famously makes cameos in his own films, just walking around in their background or something. But Michael Bay should not be in the same list as Jean Renoir and Alfred Hitchcock, I tell you. Because Michael Bay is too busy making movies like this. Oh. Ew. How long this is? Oh. oh. I had to sit through all 153 minutes. Because it has very good special effects, I would lean it more to the 5 out of 10, but now that I'm thinking about it, 4 out of 10. That is a 4 out of 10 movie. I don't think... I, I don't get it. Why do so many people like that movie? I don't think I will be seeing Armageddon again anytime soon. Goodbye.